am going to lead you in your giving. And if you want to open your Bibles to uh, Mark 8, 23, I'm going to read from verse 23 through verse 25. <clears throat> when you get there, say amen. Eight twenty three. Yep, Mark. Okay, instructions were say amen. amen. <laughs> Sorry, I, <laughs> it's the teacher in me. <laughs> okay, amen. I'm hearing amens. I'm seeing them online. Thank you, man, Minister Ryan. You're fast. Okay, so here's what the Bible says. He took the blind man by the hand and led him outside the village. And when he had spit on the man's eyes and put his hands on him, Jesus asked, Do you see anything? Do you see anything? Well, the blind man responds with, in verse 24, and he says, He looked up, and it says, He looked up and he said, I see people. They look like trees walking around. The title of my message is, I see men as trees walking. What do you see? Now, we know that literally the blind man didn't see accurately at that moment, did he? They, men were not trees walking around, but see, in other words, he could not see precisely. He could not see exactly the clarity of what really was in front of him at this very moment. So, what the title of my message, I see men as trees walking. The focus, I see. But the question becomes, what really do you see? Do you see men walking as trees? Or do you, do you see trees? Or do you see men in there with precision? What do you see? <laughs> I'm going somewhere with this. So, what happens when you can't see? Obviously, the blind man wasn't, didn't have his vision yet. He didn't have the clarity of the, um, you know, of the optical, uh, you know, truth that was right in front of him. So, verse 25 says, so, because of this, the process was not complete. Healing had not totally been completed, right? So, once more, Jesus put his hands on the man's eyes, and then his eyes were opened, and his sight was restored, and he saw everything clearly. So, my, so what do we see here? <laughs> we see that when a change takes place, you might think you can see precisely, and yet you don't. It's possible that in the beginning of you being, of something being revealed to you, that it, you don't see it quite clearly. That you need the second touch, that you need, you need to receive more of the uncompromised truth to get the vision completely, you know, why should I say completely um, as truth with clarity. It's a year of light, and so light causes us to be able to see. So do you see men walking as trees, or do you see trees walking as men, or what, or do you see? Can you see on the other side of the stone, or do you see on this side of the stone? Now, I'm leading you in your giving, but I want you to see your finances as God sees them, and you don't see them quite clearly, because all you can see is, I lack. All you can see is, I don't have enough. All you can see is, I need more clothes in my closet, and I need a better car to drive. All you can see is, hello, fill in the blank. All you can see is, I want another garage. I don't have enough to store all my stuff. <laughs> I'm preaching to myself. I'm preaching to myself too, hello. But I want to know, and God wants to know, what do you see? Now listen, Thomas Edison, he saw incandescent light before the first electric bulb ever glowed. He saw that. Now because he saw that, guess what? It kept him going. It kept him, it sustained him over the course of time before the, his real purpose came into clarity, before the real purpose was accomplished. I know all of you are sitting there thinking, well, okay, help me see. Okay, I want to, but I've got three more examples. How about Bill Gates? We all know who Bill Gates is. 
And um, he saw a PC in every office and home while other people were announcing, it'll never happen in my lifetime. How wrong were they? How many people are telling you what you see and, and it's inaccurate? How many people are announcing that you will never see that in your lifetime, that you are a prosperous individual and that it is profitable to serve God? How many people are announcing those kinds of things in your ear instead of, instead of you know, telling you the truth of the word and, you're, and it's getting in you and you're thinking about it? It's crossing by you. Inaccurate. Not seen clearly. Forty years before Israel set foot in the promised land, Moses saw it. You want to, you, you, do you believe me? It's what the word says. Hebrews eleven twenty seven. By faith, he left Egypt, fearing the wrath of the king, for he endured as seeing him who is unseen. He didn't see, it, w it was totally unseen, but he saw it. You understand? We have to see spiritually. And sometimes we need help seeing spiritually. Sometimes we have to go to those who can see spiritually when, we're, when our vision is a little dim or our vision is a little, you know, not quite with the precision that it ought to be or needs to be. Yeah. I'm here to tell you that, you know, God takes pleasure in your prosperity. I'm here to tell you the word that says it's profitable to serve God. I'm here to tell you that God has made us and set us on a hill to be prosperous so that we can show others the way. This is what's really profitable. Hello. It's called live by the word. Do you like it? Okay, good. Another story. Example in the Bible. Um, I'm sure you know this one. When the two disciples were on the road to Emmaus, right? Okay, and they're having conversation. And Jesus is right there, but they didn't see him. See, right there, bam, right there, did not see him. You've got blessings in your midst, but do you see them? People have gone out of their way to, and because God uses people, to make a way for you, but do you see it? Do you see it? Are you thankful? Well, these two disciples who spent a lot of time with Jesus, you know, here he is walking right beside him and they don't know who he is. I think their eyes were opened when he makes the statement, what manner of conversation is this? <laughs> uh, that's personally when I see that um, their eyes were opened. Now, maybe they were opened before, um, but that's what I think got their attention. You see, they had walked with him for seven miles and um, he, Jesus explained the scripture to them. But I'm not sure they ever uh, opened their eyes as in, you know, a.k.a. see him as Jesus until he says. What, my, what manner of conversation is this? Your conversation does not line up with what I've taught you. Your conversation is contrary to what I've told you and what I've lived in front of you, called the Torah, in front of you. Your conversation, the word in the flesh, rather. You, your conversation is contrary to the word being in the flesh. How do you see? I see trees walking. You see, God is intervening in your situation, but do you see it? And if you do see it, I'm going to tell you what you can expect. It's called fear will be dis diminished in your life. That's what happens when you can see God. No matter what's going on around you, fear is gone, long gone, and joy takes place. And peace is your portion. Are you with me? We all need our, our faith strengthened. I get that. And so that's why we assemble. That's why we try to our best of our ability to do his word. Now, I'm here to tell you. Um, I hear people go, well, I'm just going to listen to my heart. I'm just going to, you know, uh, do the word. I know, I know the word. I go to a church and I'm just going to listen to my heart. And then I'm going to follow my heart. But I have a scripture for you because I hear so many people say that. I work with a lot of people who say, make those statements. 
And so Jeremiah 17, 9 says this. Write it down, Bishop says. The heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? So you want to follow something that is um, deceitful above all things? You, you, you want to follow something that is um, wicked, desperately wicked, as the Bible says? No, we got to follow the word. We got to do the word. And so I am leading you in your giving. And so let's do the word. And the word says, bring all of your tithe in the storehouse, not 85%, not, not what's left over after I pay bills, not what I feel like giving today, not what I, um, not that my heart is just, I'm following my heart, I'm just listening to my heart, how much should I give today? That's not the word, you heathen. That's not the word. I see trees. No, <laughs> I see trees. I see walking trees. No, I see men of righteousness. I see men of righteousness wanting to do the word, having the Logos revelation of the word that's becoming life in their life. I see tithers. I see givers. I see God-ordained sheep coming into the fold. I see this building exploding. I see your finances taking on a new look. I see. Amen. Do you? Come on. Come on. I see prosperous opportunities knocking at your door. Open the door. Open the door. Yeah. I see. So the word says, bring all your tithe into the storehouse. This is the storehouse. The button on the bottom that says Taruma Ties Offerings Digital Missions, that, that's the storehouse. So that there may be meat that you can eat and be full and strengthened and fortified and nutri whatever, given nutrients. I don't know what the form of the word is for that one, but nutrified, I don't think that's the word. Okay, so <laughs> Nate Evans the analytical one is laughing in the background. He's probably going, I got the word. Shh. What is it? Nourish. That's the word I want. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. So are you going to listen to your heart or are you going to do the word? Let's do the word. Come on. If you have cash, then there are um, ushers, deacons that have passed out envelopes for your cash giving. If in the house you want to come up and um, give your giving, that would be great while I pray over. Online, I told you about the buttons. Don't let those buttons sit there and not be pushed. Come on. This is your time to do the word. This is the time to prove to God that you can see, that you see all the blessings that he's doing on your behalf and that you choose to do the word. Maybe we ought to pray like Psalms 118, is it? 119. Let me look at my note. Um, 119, 18. There you go. And, and, you know, it's like, open my eyes that I may see. Does that need to be your prayer this morning? Open your eyes that you may see that which is God is doing on this side of the stone and on the other side. You see, you can't see what's on the other side of the stone, but you should be able to see on this side there's a stone and some people can't. So maybe that's your prayer today. Father, thank you that you open our eyes. Now listen, you can say that once, but just like the blind man, he didn't get precision. He did not get sight with precision the first time, did he? Jesus prayed a second time, laid hands on a second time, and bam, there was the vision. So Father, open our eyes, touch our eyes, that we may see what you're doing in our lives, that you have blessed us, that you are blessing us, that you will continue to bless us as we do your word bringing all the tithe into your storehouse. Thank you, Father, that every individual online who's giving this morning and every individual in the house who are faithful tithers can experience this word that's life in their life, that all the 12 blessings of a tither become evident, that their eyes are open to see those blessings in their life. And everybody in the house and online said... Amen. So be it unto me according to that word. All right.